Welcome back guys. So people wanted to know some of the things after having the truck for a while, what I don't like about the truck. And if I'm being just a little, you know, nitpicky here, um, some of the things uh, that really annoy me, let's go over them. All right, so this is gonna be a nitpicky thing. So if you get a composite steering wheel, this comes out of some type of mold. Um, I didn't know this was there, but I had parked it one day with it. And if we tilt this up here, you can see there's just a big, huge, like, cut or groove. I don't touch the bottom of the steering wheel, but it is ugly, and it's kind of part of doing the business. But, I mean, this shouldn't be acceptable. This steering wheel should have been, like, cleaned up or whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that I saw that the other day. That, that does annoy me. Um, because the Ford had one. The Ford had a couple little nubs on the back. I was able to sand them off. Well, the Chevy has a little nub here from the mold, but that little, that's actually like a gouge in the steering wheel. So it's very unattractive. Um, don't like it. Um, and I think that that allows for, you know, for it to start picking and falling apart over time. But nonetheless, that is what it is. Secondly, people complain about the uh, gas tank size. They say they wish they could get a 50 gallon tank in here. There are some aftermarket companies that do diesel ones. I'm trying to find one. I've had transflow tanks that go into bed. I don't like that just because it takes up a big chunk of the bed and it's basically permanent. So, I mean, once you drill holes, hard plummet in and stuff like that, um, I've had them, they're a cool tool, but I see the availability of somebody coming out here. However, Chevy does have the biggest gas, gas tank. Um, and it's a 36 gallon. I have never ran into an issue. We can go plenty of miles, especially if we're not towing. And even if we are towing, I've still haven't really ran into an issue where I was able to not get fuel. It's usually a good time to stretch the legs, but I guess we could nitpick that and say that it could use a larger tank, the 50 gallon. Although hold on to your pants. When I had a uh, 40 gallon in, in the uh, 08 diesel Ford Dually I had, uh, and it had a 38 gallon regular gas tank and then another 40 and then diesel was like six bucks a gallon hold on to your britches because it's expensive so i tended to not fill it up anyway every time and only filled it up when i found diesel cheaper all right so we did find out on a closed course that the this truck with this gas engine is limited to 98 miles per hour to me i think that that should be something that we could change however over 75, over 80 is gonna be over the speed limit. So I guess Chevy has just decided for us we're not gonna take this truck over 98 miles per hour. So kind of a bummer there, but I guess if you're wanting to race it, you'll find a way to override the computer and stuff, um, but then it'll just negate the warranty. So keep that in mind. All right, so another thing that drives me nuts when I am towing the uh, blind spot monitoring, and this might work if you buy the upgraded package where you plug it in. However, Ford does it automatic. As soon as you plug in a trailer, it defeats the blind spot monitoring and rear park assist just shuts it off. It tells you down here in the screen. Well, Chevy's doesn't do it. You, you're gonna have to go into your system and turn it off manually um, so that way it won't be doing it. But literally this thing, especially if you're driving at night, will just sit there and flash that orange light at you constantly. Um, you get used to it during the daytime, but it is kind of annoying because it's just constantly picking up the trailer. Um, I wish it kind of defeated that. And like I said, it, it is annoying at night, but um, again, a nitpick, I'm glad it has it, especially in the custom trim level. All right, one of my biggest pet peeves is, is you have to shut it off every time it is going here, is you can go into um, your actual settings here and what's called buckle to drive. Now, people say, oh, Jeremy, just buckle the seatbelt, you big, you know, I'm a big supporter of seatbelts. I always wear my seatbelts. But I turn this off, because what happens is this is on, I don't have my seatbelt on, you're not getting out of shift now unless you're in a horror movie where you got to run from a serial killer that might be a big issue but for me i turn it off because when i'm hooking up the trailer or i'm just jumping in to move the truck three feet or pull it out from underneath the trailer i tow a lot i or you have to get out and look to say you don't have the camera uh for the bed and to be honest with you this bed camera is is not the best to see um but nonetheless this is a pain in the arse because I get in and out of the truck so much to get out and look, get out and check, do this, do that, just pull forward. It has nothing to do with wanting to actually drive away and drive down the road with my seatbelt off. I don't support that by any means. And in my old profession, I will tell you that wearing your seatbelt is probably gonna save 99% of the time your life and only 1% will you have been in advance for not having it. However, 
this feature is a pain in the ass and you got to turn it off uh, because otherwise you're not going to get it out of there. So I don't like that feature whatsoever. While we're in this screen, I do like, it's a pain in the butt that you have to do it, but you can go in here and actually... So you go in here to your remote lock, unlock, start feedback settings, and it says right here, remote left in the vehicle alert. I want that off because what will happen is, say uh, you have it in your pocket because it is a keyless start, you hop out, shut the door, uh, and it works both ways. So you have to shut both these off, but this basically means if you take it out because you don't want it to, you leave it in the vehicle, you get out and run it, it then honks the horn. So if you're doing something early in the morning, don't want your neighbors to be awoke or at the campground, if you don't shut this off, it's going to honk. Same thing here, remote and remove from vehicle. So you get out because you get out to check something, you shut the door and it's going to, to honk. So I like that you can shut it off in my F-150. I can never find the place to, to shut it off and it, that horn is so damn loud um, that it was really obnoxious. So again, I don't like that it has that, but I do like that it does uh, valuable to shut it off. All right, next thing I don't care much for is the, the lane keep, uh, or sorry, the lane departure warning. So this is a very big truck, it, but this is very vague. And when you have this on, um, it'll, sh you know, if you decide to drift from a lane or whatever, it will eventually ding at you and it'll uh, mute the music. What I found though is in town is it's overzealous and can't find the line or whatever it's doing. It's just constantly muting the music even if you're driving down the street. This weekend we did it with, you know, cruising that through the mountains. I was able to get all the way into the other lane. I just wanted to try it. I wanted to get over there. We did it with a save because I wanted to see how accurate it was. And it made me, it let me go almost across the lane into the, into the other uh, edge of the, the lane before it even uh, uh, took off. So not a big fan of this. I'm glad the tool's there. Uh, if you like to leave it on, I just shut it off and I forget about it because I drive in the, in the straight lane anyway. But nonetheless, uh, that is a kind of wonky feature that doesn't seem to work all that well. Um, but I'm glad it's there. It's not a huge thing to me because I like the rear cross traffic alert and I like the... Uh, the uh, rear parking assist the best although the rear parking assist is very muted and you can get pretty close to something before it, it, you have to really be listening for that ding um, for it to come up but uh, um, last but not least really all of this is going to be with some of the tech stuff wireless android auto so this thing is good because it's wireless but what it tends to do is every time i get into this thing uh, it basically automatically starts playing whatever it's picked Reuters TV. I've never even picked that. I don't like it, dislike it, have anything to do with it. Uh, but it just, it had, and because I was, a, I'm a truck driver, I think it automatically even picked some trucking channel, which was a bunch of morons that didn't even know really how, what, how, they didn't even talk correct about trucking. So I don't know if they're paid actors, or whatever, but it's annoying. So as soon as I get in here, it automatically starts jamming that news up here, Fox News, CNN. I hate CNN. Uh, it, it, it just starts playing it. So again, it's, I, I know this is me. I need to figure it out, but I've never had one in here where I can shut it off and it just comes right back in here. So it is what it is. So I'm going to have to figure that out. And then last but not least is the underseat storage back here. So I like when it doesn't have storage sometimes. I like when it does. So I like how the Ford has a collapsible container I can use. You can buy a hard plastic one or you can buy a Duha or a Husky Liners one. I don't know. But they're hard plastic. And so everything you put in there just slides around unless it's just all soft stuff anyway, which that's not an issue. So everything underneath the seat just slides out every time I, I get out. Um, that's kind of a bummer. I know you can buy one from Chevy, you can buy one everywhere else, but the Ford did it best because it had a rubber line bottom and it was square, so nothing really slid around back there. I like that best. Again, that's just a personal preference. That's not something that's gonna bother most people. Um, but for me, it's just kind of annoying. But nonetheless, um, if you chose to get a hard plastic one, you could. Um, just keep in mind, if you have a tape measure in there and you don't have anything else that's gonna slide around and bang around, it's noisy. So that pretty much wraps it up, guys. I'm a big fan of just about everything on the outside of the truck. I know people think it's ugly, but that's just a personal preference. That's not, uh, I'll agree with you. When I first saw it, I thought it was kind of ugly. Um, and it's just grown on me over time. I've grown to like it. I've grown to like the mirrors, which I hated the mirrors initially, but over the last year or two, I've just, I've, you know, flip to the other side. Um, but I mean, those are really my, my biggest complaints about it. I do love all the safety tech. This has auto high beams, but you got to remember to turn them on every time the Ford allows you to just leave them on, but that's not going to be a ding for me because I have it. But because I put LEDs in here, the way Chevy's built the headlight itself and uses the light, 
it's it's I don't really even notice that I don't need high beams all that much the four just dotted automatically I forget half the time to even turn them on because they're so bright but it is a nice feature it's not gonna be a ding but those are really my biggest complaints it's just some of the inside stuff but I mean other than that the the 24 up trim levels are gonna have the new interior um, which could have its own complaints I believe the safety tech interface stuff is gonna be about the same I know they have the buckle to drive in the upper one um, but I really don't have any complaints the outside's wearing great so far um, no scratches or anything crazy everything's just driving really good on the Chevy um, fit and finish is good so those are my biggest complaints they all have to be inside the truck uh, it has nothing to do with comfort I'm plenty comfortable uh, in here the seats are, are good um, and the, the fit and finish of everything in here is is, is above what I've seen in the Ford. Um, but Ram's interior is also, I, I dinged them a long uh, last year just because we're still kind of in the old phase of stuff. But after spending about a month in one of those, it's very nice. It's very nice. It does have its own little distinct things. It's kind of like, eh, I could have done better here, done better there. But at the end of the day, this is covering the Chevy. Those are my dings on it. Guys, down there in the corner is the uh, subscribe button. Um, and I appreciate all you guys being here. So smash the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. So that way you can enjoy more content. If not, it just helps my channel out. Um, and I appreciate you being here. See you on the next one.